Hello and welcome to the Tennessee Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admission Officers Virtual College Fair. Thanks for joining us. A couple of announcements before we get started here. To everyone in the audience, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our representatives at any point in time. Camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many sessions that are happening, so be sure to sign up for those additional sessions. There's a one more hour after this and also a fair on April 8th and April 12th. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within a few days at strivescan.com slash Tennessee. And we are in session B4 here today. So our institutions are Illinois Wesleyan University, Columbia College Chicago, Southern Illinois University, Millican University, and then Lake Forest College. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Illinois Wesleyan University. Take it away. All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Andrew Starnes, and I am the Southern Regional Admission Rep for Illinois Wesleyan University. I uh, do always enjoy getting the chance to talk to Tennessee students because I live in Tennessee. So I'm in the Eastern part of the state. Um, is where I'm based out of. So I do have the pleasure of working with students from the Tennessee area, as well as many of the states in the southeastern part of the United States. Um, so looking forward to getting a chance to talk with you a little bit this evening about Illinois Westland and how we were recently named um, number uh, in the top 10 um, for job placement um, and recently named the hidden gem of the Midwest as well. So just a lot to talk about in a short period of time, so let's dive on in. The Illinois Wesleyan, we are liberal arts, strongly rooted liberal arts university located in Bloomington, Illinois, about um, two and a half hours south of Chicago. Got about 1,700 undergrads, so that allows us to have very, very small um, classrooms. On average, about 16 students per classroom um, is typically the setting. Something you won't see at Illinois Wesleyan, you aren't gonna get the large stadium style seating you're gonna get a lot less lecture and more discussion. So that's what we want to emphasize is the value of a smaller liberal arts education, quality access to your professors, making sure you get your questions answered in class, um, great after hours um, opportunities for extra help. And then of course, great conversation with your fellow peers. Plus, if you're looking for um, graduate uh, level research, we've got the place because we're an undergrad only school. So our undergrad students get that access to graduate level research um, at the undergraduate level. In fact, typically about 25% of our students are engaged with that at really at any given period of time um, in a normal semester. Um, so Illinois Wesleyan, we are composed of three different main colleges. We have our School of Nursing, with almost two decades of 100% job placement. It is a direct admit program. Um, we do have our College of Fine Arts. So for our theater students, um, tons of apps come in for the School of Theater Arts from my area, um, just renowned school, uh, theater arts, school of music and art. Um, so, so many things to choose from. And again, all these majors um, deeply rooted into the fine arts as well um, and the liberal arts. And then, of course, we have our College of Liberal Arts um, that has contained the majority of our 80 different major minor combinations, everything from neuroscience to physics, um, pre-med, political science, uh, you name it. In most cases, we have it or a track that can get you through there um, on its a grad school as well. Um, now, with the Illinois Wesleyan, we are proud of trying to become a more and more diverse and very inclusive campus. Um, we have right now about a third of our students on campus are students of color, and two of our last three classes were the most diverse in history. So whether it be our main orientation, pre-orientation programs, or special graduations, we want to make sure that we are honoring and uh, just really just emphasizing the success of all our students, um, particularly of our diverse background. And then of course, even for our first gen students, 30% of our students in the last class were first gen. So the point of it is no matter who you are, we want you to feel very welcoming, uh, welcomed at our campus for sure. <clears throat> now at our campus life, we do have a lot in common with the bigger universities that you might see or get a chance to talk about. Um, again, not necessarily the size of students, um, that we have with tens of thousands on campus, but we have tons of student run organizations over 120 plus. We do have Greek life, sororities and fraternities, study abroad options, um, campus events, theatrical productions, you name it. There's just so many different ways to get involved on the campus, never a dull moment, even though again, um, it's not as big of a university as some that you might hear from 
um, during your college search. Um, we are D3 um, NCAA. Um, we are in the CCIW conference. Uh, we take a lot of pride in being very successful on the athletic side. Uh, we have tons of wonderful student athletes across our 24 different varsity sports. Men's basketball we just won the conference title a few weeks ago, first in our history. Um, so we were just so proud of them and, and all the success that you see from our students across the board. And even if you don't have interest in sports, it's still a great way to come out and support the peers, especially um, when we do get a lot of wins. That always makes everyone get excited and, and want to get out and support um, the teams. Um, and we also have esports. So if you have interest in gaming, um, we do a very competitive esports program and opportunities to get recruited there as well. Um, with financial aid, um, I always tell everyone, don't ever let a private school cost intimidate you because number one, we're going to do a lot of things to help cut that cost down. Over 95% of our students are going to receive financial aid. We offer great merit scholarships. They do go as high as $34,000 renewable each year based on GPA and scores. Um, we're test optional this past year for our seniors. Um, we are going to be making a decision for next year's class. Um, but in the event we are test optional, even if you go through that way, not only um, are we working with you test optional, but we are offering full acceptance and financial aid consideration for our test optional students. Um, last year, our average um, was a 3.75 GPA, 26 ACT, um, 12, 10 SAT. So if you're at that range or higher, you're going to be looking on our higher end scholarship side. And then, of course, for the next steps, our application will go live in August. We are on the Common App. Um, we have our own personal application as well. Both are free, so really easy to get involved. We are doing virtual visits throughout the spring and summer. We're safely in-person in -person campus visits through the spring and summer as well. So there's plenty of ways to connect both virtual and in-person on campus. I can't emphasize that enough. And then, of course, you can reach me. My main contact information is on the top left of the screen. So feel free to give me an email. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to help you out. And again, I'll be helping you throughout the entire main admission process being from the South in this region as well too. And uh, just hope that you'll be able to connect in the future and have a great rest of the evening. Thanks for tuning in to hear all from the schools. Great, thank you, Andrew. Okay, next up, we've got Columbia College Chicago. Alfredo, take it away, thank you. Hi everybody, my name is Alfredo. I work here at uh, Columbia College Chicago as the Tennessee representative in our admissions department. Uh, just some basic information. As you can see, we are located in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, we are a four year private liberal arts college. Uh, we do mainly focus in the creative industry. So if you're a student that really enjoys, you know, being surrounded by other stu uh, creative students like yourselves, or just being around a creative environment, this might be a great place to look at. So when it comes to numbers I'll be throwing out, um, in terms of our student body, we're a little over 6,500 students. We're considered a medium-sized college. A majority of our student body will uh, be composed of undergraduate uh, students looking to get some kind of bachelor's degree from us. Uh, we do have a small graduate uh, uh, student population as well. Uh, this past year, we did enroll over a little uh, over uh, I'm sorry, 1,700 new students. Uh, a majority of that will be a combination of freshmen and transfer students. We are also very transfer friendly, so if it doesn't work out. Um, you know, enrolling here at the fall as a freshman, feel free to enroll at a local community college or a local university, do some of your liberal arts requirements there and finish out your degree here with us. Uh, we do have uh, 60 different uh, majors and programs available at the college. That's gonna be a combination of majors, minors, um, online certificates and graduate degrees. Uh, when it comes to our freshmen, uh, we have about 71%, 71 of them do live on campus. Uh, for two reasons I like to stress, first is location. You get to live in downtown Chicago as a college student. And the second one is access. At some point you are required to get um, an internship, depending on what degree you have, or maybe you want a summer job. Um, a lot of those opportunities are gonna exist in the downtown area anyway. So location and access, it's a great combination uh, when it comes to uh, living on one of our residence halls. When it comes to diversity, about 49% of students identify as students of color. This is a 
big part of our identity here at the college, uh, diversity and inclusion. About a third of our student body also identifies within the LGBTQIA spectrum. Uh, as an arts college, if we're not doing our job to provide each student a platform to tell their story, uh, to uh, you know, talk about their experiences, regardless of whatever identity they have, life experience they have, uh, we, you know, we wouldn't be doing our job. Uh, and when it comes to the average high school GPA for incoming freshmen, it's about a 3.34. Uh, we are test optional. So maybe if you didn't have uh, access to a testing location this past year, maybe you um, are not the greatest standardized test taker, don't feel obligated to submit those scores if you don't feel comfortable. Uh, when it comes to financial aid, there are three opportunities to uh, earn financial aid from us. The first one is completing an application with an official transcript on file. The second one is submitting a FAFSA uh, with our college code attached to it. And the third one is submitting a portfolio or audition. So for BA seeking students, uh, a portfolio is optional. Uh, for any BFA or BMUs applicants, uh, audition or portfolio is part of your application. So 99% of freshmen earn some kind of financial aid from us and 97% of transfer students earn some kind of financial aid from us as well. When it comes to our uh, learning environment, we do uh, fit ourselves hands-on immersion in your field from year one. So uh, what does that mean? Uh, maybe some colleges and universities around the U.S. might make you focus on your uh, liberal art requirements your first two years and then your major related classes your last two years. At Columbia, we don't do that. We let you jump right into your film classes or photography classes or musical theater classes, you know, year one, semester one, day one, if that's something you want to do. Um, we do have relatively small class sizes. Um, the average size is us usually 15 to 18 students per class. Um, this is a pretty great way for you to not only connect with your classmates, but also connect with your instructors because faculty, they do live what they teach. We do make sure of that. Um, I always like to tell a little story. I took a theater class here when I was a student. Uh, it was a stage makeup class and my instructor was one of the head makeup artists to Wicked when it had its residency here. So, uh, you know, she taught us what she did um, as her full-time job. When it comes to majors and programs, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we do have 60 different majors and programs. This is a very general overview of what we have available for you here. So we have audio communication and writing, media arts, performing arts, and visual arts and business. And at some point you are going to be uh, given some electives so you can dabble in other interests as well. Um, so feel free to not only come here to study, you know, whatever major you wanna pursue, but also we wanna make sure you're engaging in other things that interest you as well. Uh, when it comes to something beyond your major, this is a relatively new program we started. We call it the Columbia Experience. Uh, you know, we start off with a class called Big Chicago, your first year here. Um, it's really designed to expose you to different communities in Chicago, um, engage you with different industries um, and job markets so that by the time you graduate here from the college, you know exactly what kind of uh, job opportunities exist here in the city. Um, and then we have, you know, our creative communities and then our innovation and impact classes that build off of that first year experience. Um, as I mentioned uh, in the beginning, we are a liberal arts college. So while you're here to study film or music, you still got to take those liberal arts requirements. So history, math, science, all that fun stuff uh, to get a degree from us. Uh, and then lastly, um, you know, our student body uh, is a pretty amazing group of students. Uh, we do have over 70 different clubs and organizations. So whatever you can think of, it probably exists already. Uh, you know, Black Student Union, Latino Alliance. Uh, we have a Quidditch team, we have intramural sports. Um, and if a club doesn't exist, you can make your own. Um, we do have over hundreds of different campus events a year. So just to talk about the theater department, they put on about 30 productions a year. So I always tell students there should never be a reason why you're bored. There's always something to see, always something to do. Um, and then lastly, we do have residence centers designed um, specifically for creative students in one of our residence halls, actually. Uh, we have one floor that's completely vacant, um, painted white, and you can just paint the walls with whatever you want. And every year we paint it white again for the next year to do that again. So uh, that's my contact information. Uh, feel free to shoot me an email, uh, give me a call at either of these two contacts. Um, and when you're ready to apply, uh, stop by at columnedu slash apply. Um, so thank you so much for having us here and I'll hand it back to Dan. Perfect, thank you, Alfredo. Really appreciate that. 
Next up, we've got Southern Illinois University. And I wanna make a quick reminder while Tom's getting set up, just to, to everyone in the audience, be sure to use that Q&A button on your screen. Type your questions to our representatives. They love getting questions from you, anything about their own individual campuses that you've heard about, or if you have any questions about the college uh, search process in general. So feel free to use that Q&A button. Tom, take it away. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tom. I'm a admissions coordinator here at Southern Illinois University. Um, we are located in Carbondale, Illinois, which is at the very, very southern tip of Illinois. Um, it's about three hours from Nashville, three hours from Memphis. So we're in a good, uh, good little spot right there at the southern tip of Illinois. Um, we are among the top 5% of all U.S. higher education research institutions. Um, so if you are interested in any type of research, we are a great fit for you. You can start doing research your freshman year here, which is really cool. Um, all our faculty and professors are doing some sort of research. Um, we have about 10,000 undergraduate students on campus, uh, which means we're like a mid-sized university, uh, not too big, not too small. Um, even though we're mid-sized, our average student to faculty ratio is about 13 to one. Um, so our classes are relatively small. Um, which is exciting because you will get that individualized attention um, in the classroom that, that you might need. I know I needed it for sure. So, um, hey, Tom, I don't want to interrupt you, but uh, we're just seeing a blank mail screen. Oh, really? Let me try that again. Can you see it now? Yes, perfect. There we go. Oh, okay, thank you. I'm going to go back. So yeah, like I said, we're about 10,000 undergraduate students and we have 200 different programs offered and we have an average uh, student to faculty ratio of about 13 to one. Um, our housing is pretty cool. We have the biggest dorm rooms in the state of Illinois. Um, this year and the year before, every student ended up getting their own dorm room, which worked out really well uh, for COVID. And we are currently offering it again next year uh, for fall 2021. And then hopefully the year after that again for fall 2022. Uh, our rooms are suite style, so you'll share the bathroom with only one other person in one other room. Um, so it's pretty cool. We have a anytime meal plan, and what that is is that the dining halls, um, as long as they're open, you can go eat. Um, it's buffet style. Eat as much as you want, whenever you want. If you just want like a burger, just want an ice cream cone, you can go in and uh, go get that. You just have to show your student ID. We are Division One uh, NCAA Division One sports school. We are part of the Missouri Valley Conference. Uh, we just added women's soccer as our newest sport, so that's very exciting. Um, our football team is currently doing their spring season right now, and then they're gonna play again in the fall. So uh, they, they're doing pretty good this year. We just beat North Dakota State, so that was really exciting, and they haven't lost in like five years, so um, and they're gonna have a, a, good, a good draft pick. So we were very excited about beating them. Being a student at SI, you get free tickets to all our sporting events, so you can go to a game, uh, cheer for the team in the student section, have, have a lot of fun, which is super exciting. We also have over 300 registered student organizations. We have academic, religious, professional, uh, student government, Greek life, just about anything you can imagine. If you want intramural sports, we do that, video games, hiking. Um, we have tons of stuff to do. We want our students to get involved on campus, and a lot of them do. Uh, my favorite part about SIU is that even though you'll be from Tennessee, you're still going to get in-state tuition from us. So you're not going to pay any out-of-state fees or tuition. Um, you're going to pay what an Illinois resident would pay. And we like to give 90% of our students receive some sort of financial aid and give out tons of scholarships, um, over $10 million every year in, in scholarships. So this is the overall budget. This is the 2020 budget and the 2021 budget. Um, so tuition is about 9,000, fees about 5,000, and room and board is about 10,000 uh, for the year. So about 25,000 for the year. Um, however, we do like to lower that as much as possible for you, giving you the in-state tuition. And we also have scholarship opportunities that are um, based purely off GPA. So as long as you have at least a 275 GPA, unweighted GPA, you will get a scholarship from us. <clears throat> so it starts at 275 and it goes up to different tiers. The highest tier being a 3.8 and higher. Um, that'll be a full ride, covers everything. It is competitive for that one. And there's an interview process and they, it's very selective. So, um, but that does cover everything. We do not require test scores. We are completely test optional. We are gonna stay test optional for the future. Um, so 
no ACT or SAT. If you do take it and you do do very well, like a 28 on the ACT or 1300, uh, 1310 on the SAT, you can submit them and it can only help you. It can't hurt you at all. It can boost you up to the next level of scholarships, which is super exciting, but it's not required at all. If you do bad on it, no big deal. Don't have to send it in. Um, we are, we have our own application on our website and I, we just got word that we are gonna be part of the Common App. Uh, our, we are still accepting applications for this fall and then June 1st will be opening up for June uh, for fall 2022 so you can join us on the common app like I said we don't need ACT or SAT scores we'll just need an official transcript um, and you can complete the application that way so if you want to follow us we are on all tons of social media we're on TikTok Instagram Snapchat Twitter Facebook um, are, we're open for visits right now and throughout the summer <clears throat> so if you want to come visit us uh, go to our website and more will be opening up soon. Uh, get on our wait list and we will host you for a visit. Uh, but thank you for your time and hope you have a good day. All right. Thanks, Tom. Next up, we've got Milliken University. Give me just a second while I get this started. All right. All right. Thanks. And then... Uh... Gavin, just FYI, we can't see your camera yet. There awesome. we go. There we go. All Thank right. You. So my name is Gavin Halpin, and I'm a St. Louis regional recruiter for Millican University. And I work with students in about a dozen other states in the Southeast. So that's why I'm here with you this evening. Let's get started. Millican's located in Decatur, Illinois. So if you look at that state of Illinois map at the bottom and see the blue indicator right there, we're about as central Illinois as you can get in Decatur, being halfway in between the state capital of Springfield, Illinois, uh, but also uh, straight to our east, about 30 minutes, is Champaign, Illinois, uh, where the University of Illinois is located. But the town of Decatur is about 70,000 individuals. If you look in the top right-hand corner, you'll see a snapshot of our downtown area that has fun shops and restaurants, but it also has a variety of student-run venture locations for our students to interact with the campus community. Those include a student-run coffee shop, student-run art gallery space that is uh, regularly being updated, but as well, we have a student run black box theater that is getting a regular use. So it's important for our students to feel comfortable on campus, but also in our community. And that's what we really have a great working relationship in the form of those student run ventures. But also it's not uncommon to see members of the community come to our campus every day to utilize our meeting spaces, to come for lectures, to come for community events. Uh, we are a division three institution on the athletic side of things. So they will come and support uh, their uh, Big Blue is what our mascot is on campus and also come to a variety of performance activities across campus too. No schools have a lot of rankings they like to throw out at you. won't read all of these to you, but I will highlight that third one listed that we are the number three best college in Illinois to land you a job. We know that there are many options within the Midwest and specifically in Illinois. We take great pride in being a career focused institution. So we want our students going into that senior year to have a, a plan in place of either grad school or uh, going into the workforce. And so we take great pride in that when a student walks across our stage with their diploma, that they have a plan in place. And it's great to receive some recognition for that. Here's a great snapshot of uh, all statistics at Millican. I won't again read all of these to you, but I will highlight ones that I think are important at this time. So we are that smaller private institution with 2000 total students, an average class size of 15. And then we have a 10 to one student to faculty ratio. Then if you look at the top right hand corner, we have 50 plus academic programs. I'll break down the schools and colleges in just a second. I mentioned the division three athletics. We have 23 men's and women's varsity sports. And we are a part of that CCIW, uh, similar to Illinois Wesleyan at the beginning, Collegiate Conference of Illinois, Wisconsin. It's one of the most competitive division three conferences. So if you're interested in uh, be continuing to be a student athlete with a great emphasis on you being a student, but competing at a very high level. Uh, that's what the CCIW does every day. So I mentioned the 50 plus academic programs. Here's how they would break up. So we have our colleges of arts and sciences that would feature some of the humanity side of things. So your communication, your history, uh, your political science, but it's, then it's gonna have your standard sciences as well. So your biology, your chemistry, uh, your psychology, uh, but one thing I always like to point out for students, the student that comes in and says, I'm going to major in pre-med or I'm going to major in uh, pre-vet studies, you're actually majoring within the College of Arts and Sciences. You're going to be majoring in biology or chemistry, 
and you're going to be advised with us in a secondary advisor process, making sure that you're at or above the credentials needed for that dream next step of that school or med school. So I always like to make that distinction for students. On the College of Fine Arts side, we offer a school, a school of arts technology, a school of music, and then a school of theater and dance. This is a college that we see a ton of volume of applications for each year, uh, mainly on the school of theater and dance side, and then honing in even more, mainly on our Bachelor of Fine Arts or BFA in musical theater. Then we see our College of Professional Studies, so all areas of nursing, education, exercise science and sport, and then our Tabor School of Business. So anything outside of the, we have our regular business administration. We also have international business, accounting, finance. It's not uncommon to see students within that school end up picking up an additional minor or double majoring, very flexible offering there. When it comes to what students do on our campus, we do have similar to everyone else, a wide variety of organizations and clubs across campus. I think it's helpful to think of individual bubbles for involvement opportunities. So the athletic and wellness bubble, the bubble for the performance and fine arts pieces, the bubble for Greek life, service life, religious life, so on and so on, lots of bubbles, right? On average, a Millican student ends up involved in three organizations on campus. So even the student that comes in and says, I'm just gonna do baseball, chances are by the time they graduate, they've dipped their toes in a couple different waters across our campus. One of those opportunities as well would be studying abroad. So we have the traditional go away for a semester route. We also see students take maybe a seven day to 10 day up to maybe a month uh, immersion opportunity. Usually those are individually faculty led. And then this brings me to the application piece. So if you would be interested in applying at all, we have our regular application. We're also a member of the Common App. Truly all we need to see is your high school transcripts. We have gone test optional for the next two recruiting cycles, including this one. Um, so all we would need to see would be your transcripts and your application. If you want to send letters of recommendation, a writing sample, do an interview, we'd love to do that uh, with you. Uh, but in the meantime, reach out with any further questions. Thank you. All right, thank you, Gavin. Next up, we've got Lake Forest College. Take it away, Franklin. All right, thank you very much. Let me get my, my timer set here. All right, and share my screen. All right, well, thank you, everyone, and good evening. We're gonna chat a little about Lake Forest College, and I gotta say, I'm very excited to do this session because I am a Tennessee native myself, so I always love working with my students from my home state. So to get things started, for those that may not be too familiar with Lake Forest just yet, we are a wonderful liberal arts college um, located just 30 miles north of downtown Chicago with about 1600 total students. Um, we're primarily a residential institution, about 85 to 90% of our students do live on campus. Um, as you can see, more than half are students from outside of Illinois and about 15% are international. So for those of you Tennesseans who are looking to venture beyond the volunteer state, uh, you will not be the lone ones doing so. And we really have a very active campus life both during the week and on the weekends. Other pieces I, I'll point out during our presentation are really a commitment to career services, um, a really traditional liberal arts approach that values um, learning in and out of the classroom and um, really a, a highly accessible um, approach to financial aid and scholarship. Um, four things that make us unique that I'm gonna talk about in this session. It's a, a pragmatism toward liberal arts, a real eye on career preparation, um, great city access, and of course, a, a really diverse campus life. So if you're not too familiar with the liberal arts, um, it's really a, a huge reliance on both breadth and depth of learning. So for students who would like to double major, they're not sure what they want to study just yet, um, these can be great fits for you, but if you know you want a smaller, more intimate campus environment, our average class is about 17 students at a time with no classes going beyond 30 students, so really a tight-knit relational piece. Where Lake Forest takes things a step further is really a huge commitment to this pragmatism, ability to, to be a doer and take learning beyond the classroom. So for students that have pondered or been interested in things like internships, undergraduate research, off-campus study, um, in the loop, which is our um, on which is our uh, residential program in downtown Chicago. We really think it's important for not learning, for learning to not only take place in the classroom, but also outside of it and do a lot of those things that are important to you. So regardless of what 45 major of our 45 academic programs you choose to major in or um, major in a combination of them, we are certain that we will provide you meaningful experiences beyond just the classroom at Lake Forest. Um, like a lot of my, my peers in this session, we have a real focus on career services. 
Um, we have 11 professional staff in career services, which is more than double the national average for institutions of our size. So for those of you that really would want a more intimate personal experience um, in your career advising, just like you would in the classroom, that's really an expectation that you can have at Lake Forest. We have multiple pathway programs in um, law and public service, communication and creative arts, science and healthcare, business and finance, and even a build your own pathway. So each of those pathways um, have specialist advisors in their programs who really have walked the walk in the cases of students that are thinking about, you know, applying to an MBA program, applying to medical school, looking to join the Peace Corps, these sorts of meaningful experiences where having um, real you know, experience as an advisor can have great value. Um, one of the many perks of being near Chicago or um, also from a career standpoint, we offer tons of exciting networking programs. Our Career Palooza event brings um, literally 400 different um, alumni and friends and hires to campus to literally fill out our varsity basketball gym for students to have mock interview and networking experiences. Um, and as it said on the first slide, 97% of our graduates have a job or are in graduate school within six months of graduation. So that outcome piece is definitely a huge part for us. Um, I'm of course gonna talk about Chicago a little bit and to clarify, we are not in Chicago. We are 30 miles north of downtown right along the lake shore, but we are just a short walk up to the train station and about a, an hour train ride, 45 minute train ride into downtown. So for students that like the idea of being near the city and having access, there's enormous potential in doing that. We take literally hundreds of class trips into the city every year. Your professors will lead you on. We even take every new first year student on the train into Chicago during orientation. So if you're not too sure about public transit or the big city just yet, we will help you get there. We also offer a residential program in downtown Chicago called In the Loop, where students can be fully immersed in urban residential living and take classes with partner institutions as well. A couple more things to touch on. One is the diversity of our campus. Um, so we think about diversity from a number of different lenses. So first off, about 35% of our students are Pell eligible. So they come from the lowest wealth profile of folks in our country. About 15% are international. About 35 identify as domestic students of color. And they come from 40, almost 45 states, almost 100 countries. So really from almost every walk of life and background you can imagine. It's really a huge part of what makes the Lake Forest experience special. And because so many of them are living on campus, you really can gain a lot from each other in that regard. Two more things I wanna talk about. First, some exciting things to look forward to on campus. Uh, number one is Brown Hall, which is a 50,000 square foot edition of our largest resident academic building on campus that holds over a dozen departments in our career center. Um, this combined with our new science center that opened in 2018, um, has added over $50 million in capital spending at Lake Forest in the last five years. So lots of exciting facilities coming to campus, um, like the new turf field for our varsity men's and women's lacrosse programs. Very, very exciting. Um, our new program in health professions with, um, with Rosalind Franklin University. So um, guaranteed admission to nursing, medical school, and other um, academic partnerships, and then a data science major that launched in the fall of 2019. Very briefly with what time we have remaining, I wanna talk about the admission process. Um, like a lot of our peer institutions, we are available on the common application and also our own separate application. We do require a writing sample essay for both. Um, in terms of test scores, we are test optional and have been since 2006, a long and proud history for us. You can see our average scores there along with our average GPA of about a 3.8 on a 4.0 scale. And we do ask for one letter of recommendation as well. I've gone pretty quick at the end, but if you've got questions and want to chat more, again, my name is Franklin. I'm an associate director here at Lake Forest. My email is on the screen, and I am your go-to for all students from Tennessee. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you, Franklin. Appreciate that. I'm going to welcome back all of our reps here to join us, and we're going to answer a quick general question about uh, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And I'm gonna ask that we go in the same order that we presented in. So Illinois, Wesley and Andrew, do you have any advice for someone in the going through the college search process? Yeah, I just tell everybody all the time, you know, that if you uh, um, just don't know where to go, um, get stuck, you feel overwhelmed in the process, um, start by going to your admission counselor. Um, we're a great, great resource um, for all things, even outside of admission in a lot of cases. So if you're especially considering a smaller university, um, we're going to get to know you on a very, very close basis through the whole process. So that way we can um, serve you the best and, and make this a little bit easier for you. 
I think my advice, especially uh, as an arts college, um, there, you know, there is a portfolio aspect to the application. Um, you know, before you even submit that working with uh, an, an art teacher or a music teacher, or maybe a mentor that you really uh, mesh well with, um, I do get a lot of students who want to submit every single thing they've ever created. Um, and I would encourage, um, you know, students to really curate, you know, your best work to submit, uh, you know, the best version of yourself and what your uh, abilities can show us. Uh, mine would be visit as many campuses as you, as you can. Um, a lot of places are open now for visits. Um, they'd be doing it safely. So I would recommend just getting out there, seeing the campuses, see where you could picture yourself going for the next four years. So um, that's, that's what I would recommend. My advice is to, yes, the, the counseling side, us, we, we want to interact with you, but utilize current resources on the campus as well. So current students, if you know someone at a school uh, from your hometown or one of your parents, friends, kids, if you wanna utilize them for a connection, I think hearing from a student who's currently going through the process is very helpful in helping you realize if it's an environment you wanna be in. Such great advice. I always hate going last in these because I feel my, my peers always do such a great job. Uh, you know, one thing I always talk about is sort of really trusting your gut can guide you a long way in the college search process. There's going to be a lot of options, a number of great institutions out there for you and really exciting options and really exciting sort of places that you can go. Um, but deep down, when I talk to a lot of students, they kind of know in their gut at some point that sort of spark happens um, for them, whether it's when they're physically on the campus or communicating with someone from the institution, um, but trusting that gut can go a really long way. So I always encourage students to do that. All right. Thank you. That was great advice. Uh, now I want to turn the the tables a little bit and talk a little bit more about your own individual campuses. So can you each share one of your favorite traditions or events that happen on campus? Yeah, we have an event uh, every year called the Big Show. And basically we turn the campus into one big um, awesome uh, party uh, atmosphere in terms of just like games, activities on campus, uh, and they convert the main student center at the end to a concert. We usually have some um, pretty good bands that'll come in and we're looking forward to getting that back up and running hopefully uh, next year um, when things open back up again. Uh, we have a pretty similar event. We call ours Manifest. Uh, it's an end of the year street festival. Uh, Columbia College is about a mile uh, long on our South Loop neighborhood. So uh, we close our um, main street, which is Wabash Avenue. Um, and it's an end of the year festival. A lot of our graduating seniors will usually showcase their thesis projects. Um, and it's also just a great way to wrap up another year. Yeah, uh, we do a cardboard boat regatta on our campus lake uh, where students make a boat out of cardboard and they try to sail it across um, and it's a competition. They try to race and see which one can actually last the longest and actually float across. So uh, that's kind of a cool thing we do. For us, you'll find in a, a lot of institutions that food is involved in a lot of traditions and at a, a lot of events. One of my favorite events and our current students love it as well is called the cookie party. Sounds very traditional, uh, but it's truly it, right before the first semester finals, uh, right as classes wrap up, uh, we have all of our faculty and staff uh, fill a huge uh, facility on campus with cookies and the students come with their Tupperware and just stack up on all the sugar they need to get them through their final period. This one's a little old school, but um, we have like an outrageously fun homecoming weekend where we have over 10,000 alumni come back for the football game. We have a parade where they close the streets um, for any student that wants the small school, but every now and then says, you know what, the bigger school atmosphere may not be too bad from time to time. Um, homecoming weekend definitely does that at Lake Forest. Oh man, those all sound like a lot of fun. So I wanna thank all of our reps for joining us this evening, sharing their time. Thank you students uh, for joining us too. Uh, students, when you close this window, you will get a very quick four question survey and we'd appreciate it if you could share a little bit of feedback with us. And then be sure this is just one of many sessions that are happening. There's another fair happening uh, April 8th in just a couple of days. You can sign up and uh, uh, for those at the same website where you signed up for this one, strivescan.com slash Tennessee. This recording and all of our recordings are gonna be available on that same website too. All right, so thank you very much for everyone and have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.